Okay, so third generation Prius here. I'm going to do a catalytic converter. And luckily, this one, the converter has not been stolen off of it. But it does have a code for low catalyst efficiency. I'd like to thank Dynavox for sending catalytic converter. We're going to find out just how well this thing fits. It was packaged up really well. Lots of padding. It comes with the brand new donut gasket for the front and a clamp for the back. I'm going to have to measure. I, I like to go underneath once, but I am going to have to go underneath twice because I'm going to have to measure the inside and outside diameter of this and then go measure the existing pipe to make sure that it's going to either go inside the other pipe or slip over the other pipe. On this end, this is the easy end because this end goes all the way up to the exhaust manifold and it has the flange on it, it has the recess for the donut, so we should be able to just unbolt that. They even sent brand new bolts and springs and they even have extra nuts so that once these are run into the exhaust manifold, if you want to reach up there and put the nuts on the other side, that could make life a living hell for the next guy that tries to steal your catalytic converter. See how it's got lots of threads, so it'll come on up through there. Just be aware that also will make it your life a living hell for the next mechanic that's working on the car if you're doing an engine swap. There's a spot for O2 sensor. All right, if I remember right, these are 15 monkey meters at the front, so I'm taking the 15 with me. Uh, but the replacement bolts are 13 monkey meter heads and i think i remember the o2 sensor being seven eighths and when i put it in there i put anti-seize on the thread so it should come loose and i shouldn't have to have the special socket um, i just got an extra wrench for a cheater bar you'll see how i do that uh, i am not going to be using a breaker bar under there it's just tight quarters for me i'm a big guy and these things are low even though i've got it jacked up it's it's going to be tight uh, so i'll take the milwaukee the big bruiser under there with my half inch to three eighths adapter and the ryobi for cutting the pipe at the back but first i got to measure when i have a cheap led 20 dollar shop light it's supposed to be hanging from the ceiling but i like to lay it on the floor and light everything up oh and don't forget the cardboard Lots of cardboard. So I measured from the flange up there to the oxygen sensor down here. So the flange up there is to here, center of where the oxygen sensor is, is 10 inches. That is also true of the, the Dynavox. And then when you measure from there to over here, you've got another 10 inches, a little bit less than 10 inches here. This has got some room, so you've still got some room here and over here. But this all could move back a little bit, and I look back here, and there's room back there. This is pulled towards forward, so it could, it would actually be relaxed a little bit if it went back a little bit. And look back there at the muffler. That can all uh, has room. It can go back a little bit, an inch or two. So if this assembly, the new assembly, does push this back an inch or two, it's not going to be a problem. But if I cut this here, there's, this is, starts belling out immediately. There's no straight piece of pipe right here that I could use to put that clamp on to clamp it down and it seal off. The only way this is going to seal off real good is if I cut it here, unbolt it there, put the new one in with the little tail of the pipe that's on the replacement converters down inside this resonator, and then weld it. Well, I don't want to sit here welding with this not on a proper lift and all the welding slag falling on my neck. So if you've got more room on your Prius, you know, more pipe, 
between these two. You might be able to DIY this, but it doesn't look like it's going to be a good DIY situation for me on my Prius. Instead, I'm going to take it to an exhaust shop and pay them to put it on the lift, and they can sit there and comfortably stab this into the resonator and, and weld it in place. That way I don't have any leaks. I'm not smelling and breathing any exhaust fumes in the car. Turns out these guys have a much nicer bender and welder than I do. I spent a lot of time from the time I was 16 till I was 21 working one of these machines. The guys are just getting all the tools and ducks in a row right now. Forgot to ask him what blade he's using, but I use a 24 threads per inch Milwaukee brand blade in my sawzall when cutting exhaust. Now he's just reaching in there, getting those two bolts holding the flange to the exhaust manifold. To avoid injury, he uses channel locks to grip the sharp end of the pipe where it was cut with the sawzall. Now these things are heavy and he's done it a lot of times so he knows how to not let it hit his shin. Here's a close-up shot of the empty hole where the catalytic converters used to be. And here's the donut gasket or flange gasket, which is obviously bad. The black soot is where exhaust gases have been escaping. We're going to get a good look down inside here and see what's wrong with this converter. Wow, look at that. That is melted. What a meltdown. There is no amount of chemical cleaners or any chem cleaning methods that would ever fix this catalytic converter. It's got one little spot at the back here so it looks like the second converter was actually still good but that first converter melting down probably piled up a bunch of restriction in front of it he's getting the dynavox up in there front bolts started about to tighten them up flange bolts they're still using air because their tools are can take more punishment they're cheaper they're just as powerful as that milwaukee that i've got but since i don't have employees anymore and i don't have to worry about them dropping my stuff on the ground and i switched to the lithium ion cordless stuff about five years ago right here he's getting the oxygen sensor ready to go back in he doesn't use the same type of anti-seize that i use he's used as a different type but he does put anti-seize on the threads i like that and now he's welding up the exhaust pipe and wait till you see how beautiful this weld is there's the miller welder in the settings and here's what she looks like when she's done i told you that weld was beautiful look at that beautiful weld no way i would have made that weld look that good laying on my back with slag falling on my neck the millermatic it's the same brand i used for years and years when i worked in an exhaust shop now let's drive around and see if the code comes back leaving the exhaust shop it's got 455 368 miles and it says 117 but that obviously ain't right but we will be able to compare with what it says later after the drive to see how long I was driving and how many miles I put on it. Okay, so I've been driving a while and I've racked up a few miles and we still have no check engine light. Let's see if you can see the screen right there. So the results are in. We've got no check engine light, even though we've got 83.1 miles on the car so far and we've got 455 451 on the mileage which i'm not going to do the math because we already know with the trip meter that we put 83.1 miles on it since the converter change now i want to show you the old converter if you look inside the back end of the converter you can see what the honeycomb should look like it should look like this front and back and you can see there's a few stopped up places but for the most part it looks fine until you look in the front right here where the engine exhaust was coming out going into here and goodness gracious look at that it is melted and a bunch of it and all that stuff that melted and turned it into melted bb's and chunks went down in here and probably is piled up you're not going to see it there because it's probably piled up in the front of this converter right here but thanks to dynavox we've corrected that 
and the car's running fine and we've got no check engine light. But what does ShopCat think about it? Is it ShopCat approved? How about Tigger ShopCat too? Do you approve? <laughs> yeah, he approves. Coming to get in on some of this action. Hey, if you like this video, we got a whole lot more. We got tool reviews, we've got repair videos, we've got show car videos, hot rods, mod rods, you name it. If it's got wheels on it and an engine, it's probably on this channel. So subscribe, like, and binge watch Saint Auto. Binge watch Saint Auto.